Hey, this is Doug Griggs with PDS Equipment. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I do the maintenance on the 6042 Mark II series. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's an E or a regular Mark II, it's the same for both. Um, so we'll go to the screen first to show you how to actually get to the maintenance section. So, function one, menu. Then you can go to maintenance. First one that comes up is station, then carriage out. So you'll the head will move down to the maintenance station on the far left hand side. And you'll hear a beep. Once you hear that beep, you can you can open this cover without it giving you a fault. Okay, so these are the supplies you'll need to do the maintenance. Um, if you have primer, there's a, there's a second maintenance fluid for primer. Um, and I'll explain, I'll explain why I like the primer for the, for the, well, the maintenance fluid for the primer, why I like it. It's, uh, it's maintenance liquid 13, and it'll say on the label, PR200 maintenance liquid. So this is for the primer channel exclusively, okay? So this is a, this is something a lot, of, a lot of people aren't doing. And I think this is real good to do because your primer head is the head that is closest to the lamp. So if you're not gonna run the head that much this day, I real, on, in a particular day, I would really recommend using this. This is your daily maintenance fluid. This is your, this is your uh, 15, maintenance liquid 15. So this is what you clean the heads with, clean the capping station with. Uh, be careful with it. This stuff will eat paint off stuff. Wear gloves. Smart to do. So, whether you use a foam tip swab or you use these alpha wipes, it, it really doesn't matter to me. Okay, I, I use them both. Um, I tend to use the I tend to use the alpha wipes. These are really really clean. Um, you don't you don't get any lint or dust off of these things. So my confidence level on these is very, very high. They are like a clean room certified wipe. So maintenance liquid 15 gloves, pour some on there. And now we're gonna walk over to the machine here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by cleaning the undercarriage. My heads are, I got four positions for heads here. At first, I'm going to avoid those completely. I'm just going to clean the undercarriage. And I want to I want to have enough liquid on there that I'm leaving it wet. If it's not leaving it wet, you're not using enough liquid. So we're cleaning everything around the heads. And the reason we want to do that is because we don't want to drag any garbage through these heads when we actually go to do the cleaning. So, when you actually clean the heads, you want to make sure that that rag is wet. Now, I'm going to address something here about touching the nozzles, okay? So, the nozzles themselves, you want to avoid the nozzles themselves if you have a perfect test draw or there's no dried ink on there. If you don't have a perfect test draw and you've done nozzle washes and you've been trying to recover it for, for hours and it's not coming back, then you probably are gonna need to touch the nozzles. If you've got a perfect test draw and you're just doing your daily maintenance, let's avoid the nozzles, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. This machine has a perfect test print. So the nozzle area, you'll be able to tell in the Mark II series, it's a little bit of a darker area that's recessed back up inside that stainless steel. So that's how you know where your nozzles are at, okay? So on a perfect test draw, I'm not gonna touch those. I'm gonna try to avoid them, but if there's dried ink on that system, if there's dried ink on that, on that head, I need to get it off, even if I have to touch the nozzles. That dried ink is eventually gonna migrate into that nozzle path and give you trouble. And I'm, I, I've, I've gotten to a clean spot on my rag 
okay? And again, you can do this entire thing with one rag. It's looking pretty good. So I, I typically do my white last because the white, the white can kind of contaminate everything else a little bit. I typically do the white head last. All right, and you know you've got a you've got a chrome looking surface here. If you don't have that chrome looking surface, you've probably got dried ink on there. You need to get all of that off. Okay. Now. Here's something you some you may not have seen before. So this is called your mist absorption filter. So as this machine prints, the filter that's in this little compartment right here sucks up the ink mist. And I we see this get overlooked a lot in the field. So this this filter is very important. If that filter gets clogged, it's it's not gonna do its job. So and it's not one of those things I can tell you to do it every day or every week. It just depends on what you're printing, how you're printing, okay? If you're printing on flat stuff all the time, you can probably do it weekly. If you're doing a lot of LD printing, you probably need to do it every day, the long distance printing. That long distance printing is gonna create more ink mist than conventional flat printing, okay? So the mist absorption filter is right here. So you got a little tab let me know when you got it in there. So you got a little tab right here. So when you grab that tab and pull, it's gonna come out, okay? And then it looks like this. But when you look at it from the head side, look at that. That's pretty dirty, okay? That's something that needs attention. So this filter comes out. It just slides out of this, out of this little cartridge here. And if you look inside the cartridge, that needs attention, okay? You put a new filter on top of that. I've seen these so bad they drip onto people's products. So this is something that gets overlooked a lot. So I'll probably start by cleaning this off. I'll use that same rag. And you're safe to use that maintenance fluid 15 on this. I've done it many times, or you can use alcohol. It's not a big deal. So we'll just take our rag and we'll clean that out. That's good enough, okay? But now this filter. So what I recommend is clean it as much as it needs and at the end of a month throw it away or have two filters have one soaking in simple green in like a tupperware container and get a rag and squeeze it out and just rotate them out and at the end of a month throw them both away and get two brand new ones okay well we're going to clean this one we're going to see how clean we can get it we're going to clean it with alcohol let's go up here and clean it see what the result is I'm gonna walk up here and grab some alcohol real quick. So this is just regular alcohol in a squirt bottle. It comes off pretty easy. It's really not bad. This filter is gonna be okay. And you can see on the rag there. This ink typically stays pretty wet because it doesn't get much light back to it, so it doesn't cure. So you clean it off with a rag and alcohol and you can just kind of squeeze it out. Much better. That, that's gonna breathe just fine and let air through. All right, so we're gonna reinstall that. So just like it came in, just like it came in, you know. And you got some, there's some slots right here that this thing slides over, over these slots. And this is the clip right here that, that holds it, holds it in. So, and you see, you got, you see that in the video, you got little, little groove right here. And then there's a slot on the, on the mechanism itself and it pops right on there, okay? That's your mist absorption filter. And then you have an air filter here. This one doesn't get changed as much. It's right here. And then you've got a clip that locks it in right here at the top. So when you depress this, when you depress this clip, it cleans. So you can see even that one sucked up quite a bit of ink mist. That's pretty dirty. That needs some, that needs some attention, okay? 
I would say at minimum, guys, this needs to be done weekly at minimum. Uh, when you first get your machine, I would do it. I would check it every day just to see how dirty it's getting, okay? All right, let's clean this one out. I'll do the same thing. Like I said, end of the month, throw them both away. Just replace both of them with new ones. The machines come with plenty of filters. It's, it's, I think it's enough to get you through a year. Put that one back in and it's right here to see it out to see it uninstalled that's where we're going is in this void right here and this is actually blowing across your your circuit boards for your uv unit that's cooling your uv unit so it's like dual purpose it's your mist absorption filter and it's also cooling your lamp for your uv unit so when you put it back in, it goes in that slot, push it back in, clips in, that's it. All right, so we're done there. So now we're gonna take our same, our same rag that we did our maintenance with, and we're gonna come over here to the, to the capping station. So you wanna, your wipers here, these physically touch the head, so when these wipe, they physically touch the head of, of, the, of the printer. So we want these clean. Anything that touches that print head, we definitely want that clean. So if you have a rubber wiper or a vacuum wiper like this one, it doesn't matter, okay? And then just come to your capping station and you don't need to clean the inside of it. Just clean the outside of the rubber and any ink that may have dripped Okay, so things to keep an eye on. There's some things you need to keep an eye on, okay? Stuff that, that, that doesn't get changed a lot, but you gotta watch it and keep an eye on it. One of those is you have a tray underneath your wiper here in the latch for it's right here. So if you have a vacuum wiper, this isn't gonna, there's not gonna be much ink in this. This, this won't happen often, but you need to keep an eye on it because this can get really full and it can overflow. Um, and it's got a little drain tube right here as well. You can pop that off to help drain it. All right, that's one thing. And this mat is tricky because at the top, it looks like it might be really clean, but sometimes when you lift them, look here, this one, I didn't even check this one before. You see how you got to see how it, it migrates to the bottom? See, that's dirtier than it looked, right? So you can, you can clean these pads and wipe that out. That's not something you need to do every day, but that is definitely something to keep an eye on. We don't ever want this to get to the point where it's dripping down into the machine on top of the pumps and stuff like that, okay? Here, this is your waste ink, okay? So inside your waste ink, you wanna, when I do my maintenance, I always check this. That's your waste ink bottle. But here's the one that gets overlooked, guys, quite a bit. Is your, you got good light on that, Tom? Yeah, so if you have a wiper, this glass bottle that's under this little cover right here, I'm gonna take it on and off again. Here, it looks like this. When you pop it off, you wanna keep an eye on this. If this ever gets too full, it'll suck it, suck ink up into the pump and ruin the pump. So this is something you need to keep an eye on. I would check this weekly. I would check it weekly, okay? So once, you're, once you've completed all that, we only, we only use the one rag. We did all of that with some maintenance fluid and one of these, it's, a, it's an Alpha White TX1009. That's the, that's the wipe we use, okay? So now what we're gonna do, we do have primer in this machine, okay? So this is an extra step. So for primer, we have PR200 maintenance liquid number 13, 
okay? So what I'm gonna do is I like using a swab for this. So get that, get that good and soaked. And now we're gonna come over to our, to head one. For, this is for machines that have primer. So your, your far left-hand position right here, that's your primer head. This is clear, okay? But I'm gonna take and I'm gonna soak this entire thing, because this stuff, if you look here when I wipe it, maybe you see it on the video, you can see this stuff is kind of kind of thick and oily. It hangs out, and that's good. We want it to stay behind, because if we're not running the primer head much that day, this stuff will help protect it. Or you could even nozzle wash it for the people who know who who do nozzle washes a lot. You can nozzle wash with it, or you can just put it on. But I tend to like to put this on kind of thick. Okay. So for and that's pretty much it. So we'll close this cover. Once that's closed, the safety will be satisfied. We'll come to the screen and we'll hit enter. So the Maki's end is like back. We're in local mode and we're done. So that's that's daily maintenance. If you run your machine that day at all, you need to do that maintenance. And if you're a multi-shift operation, I would do it every eight hours. I would, I would do this maintenance at the end of the eight hour shift before the next shift starts. Here's the reason why. So as we're printing, if you're running the machine like we tell you to run it, you, you won't get much light refract, refraction back to the head, but you'll get some. You'll get some that gets back to the head a little bit, okay? In the period of eight hours, you don't really get enough light back to the head to start to cure the ink. But longer than eight hours, that ink's gonna start to cure. So it's important to, it's important to do that maintenance at that interval. If you don't run it that day, there's nothing to do. Okay, and as far as shaking your white ink, the screen will prompt you to shake it, or you can just walk in in the morning and shake your white ink every day. Um, but that's your daily maintenance. Uh, my name's Doug Griggs, I'm a PDS equipment, and if you need anything, uh, you can call me on my cell, 615-519-2978. Thank you.